Hey there, it's Nathalie, and I am so glad you are here. Uh, my friend, I made my little boho jeans, and my friend Jackie said, I love those, and I need a pair. So she brought me some wild, funky fabrics to use in her jeans. And so this is what I have done for her. There's her cute little back pockets. I'm going to show you how to do some of the stitches. Now, some of the other stitches that I've done on here are on my first video with uh, Flashback Fashion. I'll put the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, be sure you give me a little thumbs up and subscribe and come back often. And uh, Oh, and I'm also going to show you how to fray the bottom of the pants, the jeans. So, hey, stay tuned. So just look at this mess. Uh, <laughs> I am excited to start another pair of Flashback Fashion Jeans. These are from my friend Jackie, and she brought me some really cool pieces. One was this uh, 1976 calendar towel. So I cut out her birthday month and her husband's. Probably put this on the back pocket just for grins. She also brought this, and I think this is called like a hook towel, where it has some stitching that's done on it. I don't think it was uh, hand stitch. Obviously, it was not hand stitch. You can see from the back. So it was woven into that, but it's got all the same colors that she likes. She brought that one, and it'll ravel out on the edges really, really good. Uh, and then, so this is from the calendar towel. And then she also brought me a, like a Mexican embroidery blouse that are these pieces. And then I had this, this is vintage trim that I had some rickrack, some ball trim. I don't know that I'm going to use that. Some of my old lace. I've got some crochet. And then there was also, she had a... A napkin that had the pink red and orange colors in it so that's what the th color theme on this one is going to be and uh, so I've played with my placement and I'm going to go ahead and see what needs to be stitched down first this was also uh, the trim that I cut off from the blouse and it's got the little embroidery around there and uh, I'm going to put it on the underside of this piece of calendar towel I know I'm going to do that but anyway I'm going to kind of play with my placement just a little bit more and then get started stitching. For this first little section I took this to the sewing machine and I have a little decorative uh, stitch that I did. You could do a little zigzag or you can just do a straight stitch and I was I thought about putting it below the pocket like that below the pocket stitching but I decided I wanted to put it right up on the edge and that's the reason I went ahead and turned this under so that it's not so raggedy there and I'm going to fold this under where it's going to go to the belt loop and I want to run this off just a little bit over on this side. Actually, where I need to put that paper is not there. But on the inside, between the pocket and the denim itself, that's where that needs to go. All right, so that's where I'm going to put that. For this little section, I'm just going to whip stitch it around. And I've got two strands of just regular orange thread. And I've got a knot in the end. I'm going to bury my knot in the edge of the pocket right there and just twip stitch this around and so I've already finished that little edge and so just want to make sure I don't pick up and sew this pocket closed. I don't want to pick up the other fabric underneath it. So there we go. Now I can get a hold of it. this the rest of the way around and then I'll come back and show you. I really liked this little embroidery stitch that I put on here so I went back instead of just stitching this by hand and I tucked in some of this uh, kind of little variegated uh, rickrack and then I stitched and it, since it was right on the edge I came back and then I stitched one more row. This one this middle row was where I attached where I just did a stitching so that it wouldn't come undone. Now I've got some skip stitches right here, but that's okay because this is going to lap over. So uh, my next thing I'm going to do is this, since this is my next piece, I'm going to figure out how I want to finish off this edge. And I've got this kind of cut wonky, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to uh, 
keep this little area right here. For my next step, this I bought this for 50 cents at an estate sale, I think it was, and it has a hole in it, but I really liked the trim. And so I, what I did is I cut it on this side down to where it was kind of worn where that hole is. And so now I have tucked it in on this side. I can't make up my mind what I want to do. So you just have to kind of follow along and see. And if you can't make up your mind what you want to do with your fashion flashback pants, embroidery, whatever, uh, there you go. All right, so I have a piece of crochet thread that I've put into like a cruel embroidery needle and I got me enough string not to not run out. I may be sorry about this, but I'm gonna do a blanket stitch and I've uh, showed you on my last video how to do that, but I will, I will demonstrate that again. So let me just kind of zoom in just a tiny bit and make sure that I can stay, get my stuff adjusted here and then see if I can keep my hand out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna go on the underside of my pants and so that my knot is buried in this seam. There's a snap right there, so I need to make sure I don't hit that snap. Oh, snap. Actually, it's not a snap. It's like a little rivet that's in the corner of the pocket. So I want to do one stitch. I probably need a pair of needle nose pliers to pull that up. I want to do one stitch to get me started. So I'm just going to come back into here, into the blue jeans itself. push through all right that's going to give me a little starting place now I have turned the edge of my fabric under so that it doesn't fray out so bad I'm going to go down about a quarter of an inch and about a quarter of an inch over and then come up through both of the pieces of fabric this piece of thread is going to go behind the needle. And if you'll kind of put your thumb on your thread as you pull it through, it'll keep it from uh, tangling quite so bad. All right, so then just kind of lay your thread over and then you're gonna go down about a quarter of an inch and up about a quarter of an inch. Let me make sure I'm catching my blue jeans in this and not just the little pieces of fabric so I can see I can feel actually with the needle so I'm going to pull that behind my needle put my thumb on it to keep it from tangling and you could use embroidery floss to do this or several strands of sewing thread if you just wanted to didn't want to buy buy something you could just put like three strands through your needle and so that's what we're gonna do the rest of the way down the uh, pants leg not the pants leg but to the bottom of this little piece of dresser scarf edge right there we're gonna go there next thing I want to do is about every fifth stitch and now I've got five I want to take one more stitch right in the top of that blanket stitch just in case thread breaks or whatever happens then we've got a little stopping spot right there get rid of that pin and I'm not ready to tie off just yet, but it's really easy if you run out of thread to, you know, to tie off and then to just start back in where you left off. Actually, where you would leave, you would start back in one of these little L shapes right here. I've got my little blanket stitch done, 
And so now, and I tried this out before I before I was going to show you. Uh, I have a piece of paper underneath here, like several layers of paper, and I just did some little running stitches. And so I think I'm going to do like maybe three or four back and forth and do one more. And I've hit the knot on the underside, making sure that I don't stitch over onto the back side of my jeans. There we go. And so now I need to turn this around so that I can stitch this. You can see it. Let's make sure you can see that. Where are we at? There we are. All right, and so this is just a little running stitch, just back and forth. But I think I'd, I think I want to kind of gap it out so it doesn't look real like uh, I intended. Oh, I don't want it to look real planned, or I would rather it look kind of random. So let me make that one just a little bit longer. I don't want it to be exactly like bricks. Making sure I haven't caught the back. My paper has shifted a little bit. There we go. And I'm still using the crochet thread. You can use embroidery floss. These are fun and frustrating to do because it's like, okay, it needs something there and I don't know what to do. And so I went back, I tried several different things, pieces of stuff that I didn't like, I didn't like that. I had a little piece of this. I didn't like that there. Too many squares, too much, I don't know what, but it, I didn't like it. So I went back and got the calendar towel again and cut off this little piece of this. And so I am going to put this, and I've done a zigzag around. I'm going to put this there and then put that little piece underneath. Do I want to do it this way? Yep, this is the way I want to do it. And it's okay if I have a peak of blue jean, or I can scoot it up. I think that's what I'm going to do, scoot it up a little bit, maybe scoot it in just a little bit so it's not like right so on the edge. And uh, so the other thing is, let me show you. Get my tripod adjusted here. See if I can do this. There she is. Can you see her? What are you doing, girl? She decided to come and help. It's a good thing that this gal that I'm doing these pants for, she likes, she's a kitty lady too. All right. So I'm going to pin this in place. Uh, stitch this by hand, stitch this by machine. Sometimes this can be a little bit embarrassing. Not just exactly this, but while I was going through some of my fabric pieces, the, some of the drawers that I have uh, different little patterns of fabric and then trying to decide what I'm going to put here and then the, the calendar towel there and I thought, oh, look what I found. Like a little bit of embroidery floss, probably purchased from a garage sale, but then this one was actually, it has another history, I guess, because, now this wasn't embarrassing, this is like, oh, look what I found. I used to have a company a long time ago, back in the 90s, called Country Nathalie's Country Wearables, and we made ceramic buttons and earrings and jewelry and sold tons, literally, literally tons and tons of clay stuff. So anyway, I thought that was kind of cool, that just a little sidetrack there. But it gets embarrassing because I think I want to declutter and get rid of stuff. And then sometimes I'm like, well, I might, might, might need that. And I have gotten rid of a lot of stuff. 
So I'm looking here to see which color yellow that I want to use, because I do have a few choices, and I'm kind of leaning towards this really bright yellow, and I think that's too lemon. Um, so I think that's I think this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to dig, dig into my stash. I don't have to go buy something for this. I can just use what I have. I already have done part of this, but I want to show you. This is called, I think maybe a fly stitch or a fern stitch. Um, anyway, so we'll just pretend like that this is your first stitch. You've got your knot coming up. You're going to do a straight stitch and then you're going to come up. And so you can see it's kind of at an angle here. Let me move this pin out of the way now and pull that through. Alright, and then you're going to come straight across the needle in. There we go. And then angle back down to the bottom of that straight stitch. And it's going to make a V. Put my piece of paper back in there so I didn't have to do that. Alright, so I'm going to make a straight stitch down and then I'm going to go at a diagonal and try to keep my uh, diagonal at the same distance or tilt or whatever. I'm going to go straight across from here, coming across to my edge and then back into the bottom of that straight stitch and that makes our little V. And of course about every, you know, sixth, fifth or sixth stitch, go ahead and do an extra, one extra stitch on there just in case. I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Just do it. I'm just going to do a little extra stitch. And I'm almost out of thread so that probably, sh I probably should just go through and uh, not off, but I'm, I think I'm going to do one more for you. So coming down straight, come up at a diagonal, come straight across, back in at a diagonal, And of course, if you were doing this on another piece of fabric rather than just on the raggedy edge of this, now this fab this fabric has a, a decorative little zigzag stitch that I've done in here to keep it from raveling out. All right, now I'm actually going to go through. You don't need to see me tie off, but I'm just going to go through the bottom and uh, tie off on the underside, and then I will come back up into this same spot to start all over again. I'm almost finished with this leg and I love the way that this turned out and the, the yellow stitching around this. And uh, so now I've got this little piece of lace. I want a little peek of a corner there. This is the side seam so I've got this is wrapping around. This will go around towards the back of the leg on the thigh a little bit. So I'm just going to stitch this down with the sewing machine. I think that I can get that under the sewing machine pretty easily. I'm pretty excited with the way that this side turned out uh, and it wraps around just a little bit towards the back. So I've done the same thing with this one. Uh, I've already zigzagged like the edges, some machine embroidery around the edges of some of these pieces. So most of this, and because this has this little uh, edge, it was on the edge of the blouse, like here's what I cut up. And so there was a trim, a little flat trim down here. And so I used that to put right here and that's been stitched on. But most of this I'm going to stitch by hand and one one thing is because it's so deep in the leg of this and it also wraps around and then I'll embellish the pockets and I've got some of this Mexican blouse down a little bit below the knee and this little funky piece of fabric. But I, one of the things if you do one of these once you figure out where you want it laid out, how you want the design laid out, photograph it with your phone and uh, or do a sketch of it or something and that way whenever you start disassembling it because I'll lay this back and this part back to stitch this in first this will go next this one will be stitched down then this and I'll probably put like a button or something right there I don't think I looked at this don't know that I'm going to use that it's got some turquoise in it uh, I also I've got a little flower up here in the pocket 
got that that's lost on there that might work it's I think that's probably what I'll do I think I like that okay well thanks for helping me make that decision so there's one leg there's the other leg I'll do a different one different photo here after a while there's the other leg and let me flip it over and show you the back pockets there's one I think that's too cute. I love that. And then this pocket has a calendar on it. This is her husband's birthday, and then her birthday is on the front side. But she had requested, make sure that you fray the bottom of the jeans. And uh, so I thought, well, how can I do this? I'm kind of a little bit short on time. And so I cut some slices in the jeans just like let me put my hand in there so you can see just some little like well they're about hmm, a half an inch ish wide about an inch long maybe and so if I roll this up now you have to be careful with this because you don't want to like scrunch up your hand or scratch up your hand I've got a paint scraper And so that's getting a pretty raggedy look. Let me show you on the inside where it's not quite so dark. So there you go. I am all finished with this and I am pumped with the way that this turned out looking. Uh, I love all of the, like the lace, the little calendars, the extra little appliques that are on here, the kind of raggy edges and pieces of lace here. Uh, and the little fancy stitches that I did. Now, I didn't do this fancy stitching. That was from a cup towel. But I did these fancy stitches right in here. And uh, oh, there's, oh, around the pockets. I did some fancy stitches around the pockets. And so I thought those turned out pretty cute. I love the little flower on the pocket. And then her husband's birthday on this little calendar towel from 1979. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a little thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.